Morning guys, Mark Farashi, Protect Dog Training with Buddy. Buddy, here. Yeah. Oh, pie. Yeah. Oh, pie. Yeah. Good, back up. Good. Good. Good boy. Oh, pie. Yeah. Good. Buddy, you hop, you hop. Couche, pas bouge. Good. Nope, couche. Just excited, just got out of the kennel this morning, Pabu Jay, just now. And uh, I thought I'd come over and talk to you little guys about the shot that went around the dog world. The shot that went around the dog world. Opie, yeah. yo hop, kusha. Was in regards to the e-collar and our controversial debate that we have that's going all over the community and the dog world based on Ivan Balabanov's recent opinion, opinionated post podcast that he did expressing his opinions. Now, Ivan, for those of you that don't know who Ivan is and haven't seen any of this controversy, don't know what's happening within our debate that we have going on with about the e-collar. Um, Ivan's been around for a lot of years. I met Ivan when he first came into the country many years ago, probably 20, 30 years ago. When he first came in, he was living in Sacramento at the time. And he went into uh, a friend of mine's place, uh, a uh, well-known breeder here up in this area that bred uh, the Malinois and was one of the first people to start within the ring sport sport and bring it over here to the States and was importing dogs over from uh, from France and, and had a lot of good quality dogs. A lot of her dogs have gone on to be police dogs, etc. But I was there at the time, Couché, when uh, Ivan showed up one time. Couché, and this is before anybody knew who Ivan was. He just came over out of the country. Couché, and he was just a kid, wet behind the ears. And uh, me and Ivan actually are about the same age. Couché, Pabouge. Like I said, he's a little excited. He's been in the kennel, so I may have to let him go. All right, yep, go free hunt. You go free hunt. Nope, I got him pumped up. I started playing with the ball and getting him all ready for my little demo I was going to do with him with you guys. But all right, so back to my subject. So when Ivan first came in, he didn't speak English hardly at all. And I could barely understand him. I shook his hand and we, I got to see who he was, but I didn't know anything about him. He was just a person. And then I kind of fell out of the dog profession and did a lot of other things in life as, as one does in this profession. We come and go a lot of times. And um, 20 years later, I show back up and Ivan's all that and then some. One of the world competitors and, and his reputation speaks for itself. Man, the, the guy has done it, been there, done that, and made his, his way in the profession and is very well respected. So when somebody like him says something, everybody listens, right? I don't agree with his opinion. I, I think that he doesn't understand the e-collar to the degree he does, but he has some very key points. And in that discussion, buddy, get over here. Couché. Pabouge. With me yakking, I don't know if this is going to work. I might have to ah, couche. Good. Pabouge. Good. You pabouge. I did one this morning trying to do the same thing. I was standing up there and he did great. Stayed on a downstay the whole time. Um, but me sitting next to him, it changes things. All right. So back to my discussion of the e-collar debate. So basically, Ivan has now drawn a line in the sand. He's basically thrown that pebble into the water that creates those ripples in all our communities, all abuzz. There's been a probably three or four or five people that I respect in the industry that have all come back and did a video just like this, expressing themselves about this discussion that we're having about the e-collar. I figured that I wanted to stand up and do the same thing because I have a, a full uh, opinion and a lot of history and a lot of knowledge as far as the profession. I've been watching it since I've been a baby and I follow it very heavy. I know who's who and I follow the profession. I know the industry and I have my own opinions and my own uh, biases and everything else, just like every one of these people do. But there's some key points that Ivan pointed out that he was right on. And the one thing that, that I have a hard time with Ivan is I struggle to be able to understand uh, his points of view because he doesn't think linear. I said that in the last post that I posted. And he's, as far as I'm concerned, he's not a very good teacher. OK, I, there's a lot of people in the industry that are good teachers that have, know how to verbalize. And, and Michael Ellis is a great example of that. Very. You can you can listen to what Michael says and right away know exactly and learn and grow very fast with with Ivan. It's so confusing. You're scratching your head and you're trying to figure it out. And you may be a worshiper of, of Ivan's and you may bow down and know what he's got going on. His slant is very valuable. OK, he's talking about play and, and getting into the dog and toys and and having it. He calls it um, no conflict. Right. And having a, no conflict with the animal. Buddy, couche. Good buddy. Aussie. 
Kushe. Good boy. Nabu. Kushe. Pabu Jay, like I said, a little excited. He wants to work and I just pull them out. So I may have to put him back. All right. So with me yakking is what caused the problem. He's not used to sitting and having me sit there and yak the whole time. All right. So Ivan put out his points of view and he expressed himself. But just because Ivan is very good with training and he has a very good ability to be a team with his dog on that field and has that ability like most good dog trainers do, what we have is a world of experience behind us and underneath our belt. And we have the ability to become in tune with our animals and to do things with our animals that other people look at us and go, wow, and their, their jaw drops, right? That being the case, a lot of us are like me. I love to teach. That's what I do. I've been doing it for many years. I love to pass on my knowledge to anybody that I can. That's what my customer base is all about. My job is to educate that customer and try to get them to have that best ability, what I call the gut feeling of dog training, that ability to be in tune with their dog, to understand learning theory, to understand how we do what we do. Okay. Now to the e-collar, the e-collar is only one tool in a tool bag of many. Okay. I don't use this all the time. I use it to do specific things, to clean things up, to get the dog to be faster. There's a world of possibilities with the e-collar, with a modern e-collar. Uh, Ivan got into it and, and starting to talk about studies and things that they were doing in the scientists back in the 1920s and 30s, maybe even in the 40s, whatever it was, where before it was the technology got to a point where we're at now. In the 70s, when I first started, the, the Tritronics is a great example because that's the one that I was around, was a huge brick right? And then you had to, to change the, the stimulation on the collar. You had to take the collar off the dog, pull out a plug, put another plug in, and be able, then you could take the stimulation and change it. It was very archaic. Now they have these real stats that I can take this dial and I can go from zero to 100, 125 with some of them, right? I can change that intensity and dial it in to a mind just specifically, right? It has sound, it has a light on it. It has vibration. I can use each one of these things to communicate with my dog. Kind of like you see the lasers they're using nowadays where they're pointing that laser pointer to a door or to an area and get the dog to go right to that. And they're using that for control of the animal and they're putting it into their uh, training. Same thing with this. This thing should be broken down. I was thinking about it lately and how we explain this tool should be broken down similar to how they, they explain Operant conditioning. Operant conditioning is explained with four quadrants and it's still confusing, but they're trying to do it in such a way that people can understand what operant conditioning is all about, right? So with this, I think that, that it'd be very beneficial for people to start explaining it that way, that it's just that. I have an ability to, to have punishment, which means I can set the dial for higher where I can use it in a punishing way. When you're using it in punishment, it's a hot and cold. I can, if I go out and I reach out and I grab that pot off the, the stove and I don't use a pot holder, nope, couche. How long does it take me to learn to grab a pot holder and put a pot holder on my hand, okay? Or to grab a towel and grab it. I won't do it more than once or twice, right? Very easy. That's a hot and cold approach. And we can use for a half a dozen things that I use in my training. It's very easy to use it that way. All we have to do is worry about superstition, meaning uh, I think it was... Um, it wasn't Larry, it was somebody else talking about, oh, Haas was talking about teaching a dog to not scratch on the screen and you use a stem collar and maybe he might have superstitious uh, uh, reaction to it and now he thinks he shouldn't even be on, on, the, on the porch, right? So you have to understand that one. I don't want to go into the stuff where I'm trying to teach you. I have a whole section on YouTube that you can go to. If you go to my YouTube channel, you look at the very top, there's a bunch of tabs. One of those tabs is called community. Go to the community tab, touch on it. It'll put you into a section that has all my collection of videos that I put in there that allows me to communicate to the people that have subscribed and hit that bell. And by the way, please, if you want to learn, you want to grow, that's what I'm here to do. That's what I do these videos, to try to educate my clients and educate the public and to make myself more visible so that I keep business coming in. That's why I do it. I give it away. I basically puke my guts out. I don't have any charge for it at all. I don't have a school that I have like a lot of these guys put together an online school. They start charging. They're making money. I don't do that. I don't feel I need to. All I care about is getting enough visibility that I can get clients coming to me so that I can keep my business going. Maybe one day I'll do that, but it's a lot of work. I don't like being strapped down to a computer and you guys have been around, hanging around and listening to my videos. You already know that, right? So 
go to my community tab, see some of the dogs that I've trained. I've got a whole collection of videos and one of them is called e-collar. And I did a whole series when I was breaking and, and working um, Rocky into the e-collar. Rocky, for those of you that don't know who Rocky is, a little pocket rocket Dutch Shepherd that I had that I worked until about a year of age and I had him just doing all kinds of fancy things. A dog trainer bought him and they used him on Instagram to build their business and now he got sold to another trainer that's doing the same thing in Texas or wherever Rocky's at. He's doing a great job for them. They love the dog. He's doing a great job for him and, and I really... I love that fact. At least the dog's got a job. He's doing something for somebody out there. And he's living the life. He's getting to do bite work. He's in the PSA. He's doing all kinds of things. And that's a great thing. Couché, pas bougé. Hard for him to stay locked down like that for a length of time because he's been all wound up getting out of the kennel. All right. So go to that section. And in that section, you're going to be able to, to listen to what I say. And I'm trying to educate you on how I broke in the collar and how we use it, right? But even more importantly, you want the knowledge that's out there. I don't need to hide it from you. I don't need to sit here and, and try to be the man that, that tells everybody how to do it because this stuff has been out for a long, long time. There's a lot of people that have used the e-collar and use it in a very beneficial way. You cannot take away the quality of what this tool does for us as trainers right? But here's some key points that Ivan pointed out. And then Larry Crohn's just did another YouTube video talking about it. We're all kind of getting into the pool talking about this because it's important to us. We care, right? We care about our clients. We care about what we're advocating. It's important to us. Okay. It's important to Ivan. I mean, he wouldn't have put out that his opinion. I don't, I don't agree with, I have a difference in opinion. I don't agree with that opinion. What I do agree with with Ivan is a lot of the key points and things that he pointed out about e-collars, okay? And I have those same things. You watch my videos, you'll hear me talking about these key points, but I'm gonna kind of go over them right now. Biggest thing, the tool is only as good as the person using the tool. This tool has a lot of power, not in how much force it has and the punishment quadrant of the collar, but in the ability to be able to dial this in six ways a Sunday. And if you understand and you've been educated in how to condition an elk dog and the dog understands the communication baseboard, I don't use this till I have the dog way up in his advanced stages. And now I want to polish him off and I want to bring in this. So I have this tool in my tool bag with this animal right? And now I have it to be able to use and I can put it on the shelf, not use it for six months. And all of a sudden I want to do something with the dog, clean him up, get him working. In a, and I bring this out and he already understands the communication baseboard's already been set up. He understands what this, this language is all about, right? Couché. Good. And I don't need to use it all the time. So the problem with this tool is that people are grabbing it. They have no clue in how to condition a dog. They don't understand learning theory and they have a tendency to be human. And the human factor comes into it. Okay. It's only as good as the person using it. So the human factor is we live in a world of technology. I've got a button to turn on my lights. I've got ability to hit a switch and turn on my music. I turn on the TV with a remote control. My whole world revolves around a button and everything I do in that world is related to a button. Okay. I have total control. So unconsciously and human nature sets in and people forget about what they're being taught. They don't, they start to get human comes in and they start to hit this button for every damn thing. They don't understand. And they don't think about the fact, buddy, get up there. Couché. Tell you what, you want to go play, go play free hunt. You go play. Yep. Go play free hunt. Get no, get, you go play. Go on. Get out of here. Good boy. Tired of trying to control you. All right. So um, they use it for everything. Okay. And they don't understand that they, when they do that, they're missing the, the whole point of this. This is a conditioning tool. It's an extension of your leash and it should be used appropriately and used when you need it, when you're trying to clean something up or do something with it in a fashion of conditioning that increases the dog's ability at what you're teaching them. It's a communication tool. It's an extension of your leash is all it is, right? And if you use it all the time and you're getting, like Haas was saying, being a tickler, you're hitting it for low stimulation everywhere you go, you've stopped using it as a conditioning tool and you're no longer using it in the right way. And it's, it's counterproductive. Now you're being a disservice to the animal. Okay. If you use it the right way, you can create, do all kinds of things with it. You can polish, you can fine tune, you can, it's like having a sharper knife if you're whittling and, and, and you have a whole bunch of tools when you're sitting here being a sculptor and you're, you're working with wood, 
right? And each one has a little bit something different that it does. And that tool is being used to shape and form and, and mold that piece of art that you're, you're using it for, right? You have a whole line of 15, 20 different chisels, and they all got different attributes that you can use it for. And it's knowing that tool that you grab and you know what it's going to do. It's an artist. There's a certain amount of art in this trade, right? There's a lot of art, actually, as far as I'm concerned, because those that are skilled and get be become very good at understanding what they're doing with the animal can create a masterpiece, right? You see uh, people like, um, I can't think of his name right now. I watch his videos all the time. I see him all the time. And he has a company that he does nothing but stem color. Now, I don't really agree with that because I don't believe in the fact of putting a stem collar on a puppy when they're a young animal. And that's the first thing you do is slap a stem collar on him. That's the only thing he, he knows. I don't agree with that. I don't agree with selling that to the public. I want to educate my customer and teach them learning theory and really get them to have a good understanding of how we uh, condition an animal and get them to have all the things that we have in that bag. Then I bring this in as a finishing tool and only then. And I use it only when I need to clean something up or I'm trying to work on a certain problem with the proper learning theory that revolves around this tool, right? So now I'm going to tell you, I'm going to give you all the information you need to do, go out and get it on your own. And then I'm going to, uh, I'm going to try to advocate that you go out and you work with a professional like me or Larry Crohn's or whoever it may be, but go to somebody that you respect that's going to be able to pass on that knowledge to you so you can learn and grow when you're ready for it. Okay, you don't just buy it off the shelf and think that this is what you're going to do because you don't have enough in your head to be able to understand how we make and shape and, and get these dogs to do the behaviors that we do. Right. It's a very powerful tool, but in the wrong hands, it can do damage, you know, and that's what Larry Crohn's is talking about when he's doing, you go watch his video. He just recently did. He's talking about all the people that he sees with all these trainers that are frying the dog out there and doing a disservice to communicating how to use this tool. So that is my opinion. The other one I wanted to point out in regards to this debate that we're having is that I really am a, a kind of a pessimistic, paranoid type of guy. And when Ivan did that and he threw that rock into the puddle and that rippled went out everywhere in the community, the shot that was heard around the dog, dog training community, right, in regards to the e-collar, right, that we're having this debate about. You've seen probably half a dozen of these videos with different people talking about it right now after Ivan threw the ball, the rock into the pool and started the ripples, right? We're all, we're all getting into the pool and, and wanting to communicate our points of view in regards to this because we care, right? So that being the case, my other big point is that I really am afraid that Ivan is putting himself into a position to be the advocate to take away our tools. That's where this all started with because in Europe, they're taking away, they're taking this ability. They, they're no longer by law allowed to use this tool and it's wrong. And so they're trying to bring this over to America and they want to take away our tools. And that being the case, we are all against that. We do not want to see this happen. And then Ivan does something like that. And he draws a line in the sand and, and puts himself in a position that all these people that are the purely positive and the PETA crowd and all these people that want to take away this tool from us are going to have him be the face front of doing that. And he's going to jump into that pool because now he's got a huge amount of money coming at him. He's going to be able to get digital magic, all the people around him. He's going to be able to advocate this whole point of view that he has that I disagree with totally in regards to how he's putting it out. Because he's putting himself in a position to be that man that ends up being the face front to take away our tool. And I'm not too happy about that at all. all right? So that's my argument against him. Okay. And I don't feel that he's that good a teacher. I respect him I, for what he's done. You cannot take away anything that Ivan has done. And I have a lot of respect for him. And me, I'm not an influencer. I have maybe 50, a hundred views on a video. Whereas Larry Crohn's got thousands of people watching him and, and Ivan, you know, I mean, all these people, boom, right away, they're into the thousands. That means I'm no good. I beg to differ. And all the only difference is that I'm not using that digital magic. I'm not taking uh, very slow, methodical steps in working the social media and making that work for me so I have all these bells and whistles. I just put these videos out and I puke my guts out because I've been doing this since I was 12 years old. I'm pretty damn good at what I do and I know it, okay? So, and it's, it's hard to be humble. I mean, because this is the one thing I'm good at, dog training. I can't turn a wrench to save my life. My ability to do all kinds of things is not there. And I never claim to know anything about a lot of different things. I know a lot of nothing about a lot of different things, right? But when it comes to training a dog, 
I've saturated my whole life. I eat, breathe, and sleep this stuff. I've been doing it since I was 12 years old. I've lived in the back of kennels. I've, I'm the secret. That's that hidden secret in the back room that's doing all the stuff. When the client comes in, I work with them a little bit. I've been doing that my whole life. Okay. That being the case, I feel I know what I'm doing and I have this little bit of an attitude, right? Very opinionated, very aggressive in that regards. And it, it causes me not to have respect because people like things, people that are humble, right? When you're too braggadocious and you're, you know, and that, in that respect, I have to admit, but it's the one thing that I'm good at because I've worked very hard. I've had a hard life. I haven't gone into that, but I won't. We're talking about the e calling but I'm very good at what I do. And that being the case, I want to pass that knowledge. I want to be the best teacher I can be. I respect and idolize somebody like Michael Ellis. It's hell on wheels as a teacher. I look at people like Justin Rigney. Um, there's a whole list of people that are on the internet, that are in social media, that are dog trainers throughout the United States, throughout the world, Bart Ballone, that understand how to communicate and teach. And those are the people that I admire and, 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 and watch and pay attention to. I watch and pay attention to Ivan too, but I have to struggle and really work my way through his, his inability to teach. And it bugs the heck out of me. So, but I'll, I'll leave that. That's neither here nor there. That'll probably be something that we butt heads on for a long time. Um, teaching to me is important. All right. So I'll go ahead and close this out. Mark Farashi, Protect Dog Training, signing off with Buddy, Buddy, OPA. Good. OPA, and I haven't hit the button once, folks. This is all without a key e collar. He does have the key collar on him, but it doesn't mean I need to use it. OPA. Good. OPA. Good. Here. Good boy. Good. OPA. Couche. Couche. Nope. Good. Buddy. I see. Couche. Nope. Good. I see. Nabu. Couche. Nabu. Nabu. Couche. I see. Good. All right, guys. We'll sign off. Buddy. Yep. Couche. Babouge. Mark Farash, Protect Dog Training, and Buddy. Have a good day, guys. I'm going to close out that conversation on the e collar at this point in time and see what happens within the community with all these YouTube videos that are coming out with other people that are wanting to wade into the pool on the subject. Find a professional. Find somebody that help you learn how to use it and don't use it until you really understand learning theory and you have a good communication baseboard with your animal. It's not to be used right out of the pipe as far as I'm concerned. That's my personal opinion. I feel it's only an extension of a leash and it's to be used in that fashion as an extension and to clean things up, to polish things and that sort of thing and use it in the proper way. And you need to have that knowledge base in your, your uh, tool bag to be able to do that. Without that, you're doing a disservice to yourself and you're doing a disservice to the dog. All right. Talk to you later.